This week on BuzzFeed Unsolved, we cover the Axeman Killer of New Orleans, one of the strangest serial killer cases I've ever read. And you've read a lot. Yeah, I read a lot in my time. You're and, a uh, sicko. Strap in, because this one is rough. Yeah, this is gross. I'm aware of some details of this, and it's, it's yucky. <laughs> That's something like a, a toddler says when they don't want to eat, like if they have like squash in their plate. It's also something an adult says about a gruesome, gruesome murder. The seemingly healthy and stable Mark and Jacoba Tromp ran an earth-moving business, along with a berry farm, where all of their children worked seven days a week. They're making their kids work seven days a week. My parents would maybe be like, empty the dishwasher on a, you know, a Thursday. And I'd be like, this is bullshit. It is excessive. I guess I'd run away from my parents if they made me work seven days a week, especially if I was shoveling horse shit, moving dirt. I'd fake my own death. Oh man, okay, you took it a step further. I'd, I'd set the barn on fire and throw a cadaver in there and flee this country. Get your sunglasses ready because this one is packed full of bright stars. Wow, he had them ready. He didn't even know I was gonna say that. Had them good to go. I'm I'd, always ready, baby. <laughs> I'd like to say that this story is going to be chocked full of terrible Christopher Walken impressions, but I can't say that. And Watch I'd be out! Lying. Boys! <laughs> Two mice! <laughs> wow! Wait, so I was excited to hear about this boy who lived in a box. I told you, it's not as magical as it sounds. They just found a dead kid in a box? That's it? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be more weird details, but I thought it was going to be like, oh, and he, boy, did he not like his box. And he spent years in his box not liking his box. I mean, this was the titular moment. We just went over why this boy was in a box, because he was dead. <sighs> what else do you want? Well, the boy in the bubble, the movie starring John Travolta, he spent so much time in that bubble. You, you we have see a, a lot of bubble content. You have a habit for citing movies as I've evidence. never seen this movie. Well, I just know it's about John Travolta, and he can't go That's outside even worse. because germs are, will kill him, and he has to stay in plastic, okay. and he kisses a girl. Ooh, the plastic. We're moving on. Okay. If somebody broke into the house, they did so cleanly, as there was no footsteps in the snow outside the house, as well as no sign of forced entry. This is Colorado, right? It's snowing. I mean, conceivably, maybe the snow got covered up. No. But <laughs> no. there's also- I know snow. You don't do know you, snow because you, you're a Southern California uh, Oh, you're going to pull this car I, now from your Chicago, from the Windy City, and I, I don't know anything about weather because we know snow out there. We know so snow. nice. It's not that hard. It falls from the sky and it hits the ground. What there's a, there's, there's some nuance history? to it. There's some intricacy and if... Uh, Such as what? Oh, you don't even know. Oh my God. It's fucking horrifying. There's an elk though. There's a deer over there. But there's the remains and rubble of one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of all time, and you're looking at the fucking deer in the forest. The bellboy, Randolph Probst, helped Owen to his room, where he reported that Owen seemed to have only packed a brush, comb, and toothpaste. The maid, Mary Soapdick. <laughs> What's her name? Oh god, I know what you're- she's a maid, her name is Soapdick. I'm ha, trying ha, to move- <laughs> What a really funny big laugh you got out of that. Look how- yeah, look how happy you are! Oh man! So what a dick. gem of comedy we've mined here today. <laughs> She's got some salt in the game. She's the Michael Jordan of flying. Well, Michael Jordan never disappeared on a basketball court forever. Well, I meant so. in What kind of box are we talking? I know this isn't- It's funny you would ask that because that's exactly what we're about to get into. I have and the mind of a, a detective. Yeah, it's the first clue. Good. You don't have the mind of a detective. You just- I think I do. You stumbled upon a good a, a question for once that, you know, actually pertained to the story. Yeah. You could sip your tea all you want. I'm just saying it's clearly a coincidence. This week on BuzzFeed Unsolved, we cover the assassination of John F. Kennedy, a topic of controversy for over five decades. Was there actually a conspiracy? What do you think? I'm sure you are well-versed in this one already. I know the broad strokes. Um, I haven't really gotten into details. I figure I'll read like a 1600 page book when I'm like 60. Yeah, you don't strike me as a detail guy. I am a detail guy. Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> At the time, the case was the center of a national media circus. Some may even say frenzy. Okay, yeah. they're welcome to. It's an interesting case. That's what I'm trying to get at here. Illinois is known for soybeans and poison medicine. And Shane Madej. And me. Let's move on to the contents of the ransom note. The note requested $118,000 in exchange for John Bonet Ramsey. Strange. Why is that strange? Weird number. Oh, I guess it is very specific. Actually, we're going to touch on why that may be so specific. This is my later. detective brain. This is what I'm telling you about. I think it is. Did that I think, number I think stick out to you the first it, time? It did, but I think you're tooting your own horn a little bit too much. Shame the brain. Okay. I love this right off the bat. What do you love about it? Well, I love... I'll tell you what. <laughs> I love it when serial killers have a fun little thing. 
I don't approve of serial killers, but I think if you're gonna kill a bunch of people, you might as well have some fun with it. The maid, Mary Soapdick, said Owen allowed her to clean while he was in the room, but asked that she not lock the door on her way out because his friend was about to visit the room very soon. Soapdick said that Owen kept the shades tightly drawn and the lights off, with the exception of one dim lamp. Other staff members who entered the room also mentioned this detail. I don't want to be in the room when they're in there. That's scary. Yeah. So I imagine him just sitting in a chair in the corner, just, just sh a shadow man. Clean it. <laughs> Clean the room. You, I think you're getting Anton Chigurh vibes from this guy. Fluff the pillow. <laughs> I gotta say, kudos to that camera guy for holding that shot. Because yeah, like, if a gunshot went off, all bets I'll, are off for me. I would throw the camera at the ceiling scream and just run. Oh, I wouldn't think about anything. I'd, I'd go, ah! Earhart flew in a twin-engine Lockheed 10 Electra, a 10-passenger high-performance airliner, specifically outfitted with special tanks that allowed it to carry over 1,000 pounds of fuel rather than the usual 200. So when they built this one, they specifically said, let's make a plane that won't catch on fire. Eerily, from her early childhood, Wood's mother was said to have filled her with a fear of dark water, as a fortune teller had once prophesied that she would die of drowning. Jesus Christ! <laughs> did, did her mother bring her to a fortune teller? I imagine it was like one of those like fortune tellers you see at like a carnival. And like, oh, it would be funny if you tell my fortune with little playing cards. Oh, and it... maybe she'll tell you you're gonna marry a rich man. <laughs> <laughs> and she, like, she would. You're gonna drown one day. Water's gonna fill your lungs. <laughs> And then I was like, girl. all right, we've had enough of this, thank Let's you. Let's go get funnel cakes. <laughs> Around 8.30 a.m., about an hour and a half later, the phone was still off the hook, and another bellboy, Harold Pike, let himself into the room with a pass key. Using only the light from the hall, the bellboy Pike observed that Owen was in bed, naked, and seemingly drunk. He also noticed that the bedding was darkened around Owen. The phone stand was kicked over, so he fixed it and put the phone back in the receiver. They went in there and they saw this person on the bed with a dark, dark stains all around them and were like, chill. Those are, those are your sheets. Secret servicemen sent in advance to check out the route noted that there were over 20,000 windows overlooking the route. But since they didn't have enough men to station at every window, they opted to inspect none of the windows along the route. <laughs> Not a good alternative. <laughs> I know, there's far too many, hey, fuck it. <laughs> You know, just call it a day, well, uh, We don't have enough guys to look at all these windows. What if we just uh, don't do shit? <laughs> but, yeah, but, sounds like a good idea. But sir, the president's gonna be coming to town. Eh, he won't care. What are they gonna do? Shoot him? <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard for me to believe that three people could have been asleep while it was happening in the same fucking house. The woods get loud, though, is my only thing. But you're in a cabin. In a cabin. Were they in the same cabin in the, in in the, the room same next cabin. door? So maybe they were in there telling ghost stories or something. I don't think they were. They were probably asleep. They could have. I mean, they could have been in there telling ghosts. You know how kids do, pillow talk, stuff like that. That's not what pillow talk is, I don't think. That's what it was for me, telling ghost stories. Pillow talk like, it could either mean something you do after sex, or it could mean... Yeah, I think that's it what It could mean what, like a sleep. Do you tell talk. ghost stories after sex? <laughs> that's for me and my girlfriend to know. <laughs> maybe. You just spark up a, a cigarette. Let me tell you about the Keddy Cabin murders. <laughs> I feel like you have baseball cards of this guy. You, I absolutely do not. They don't make serial killer baseball cards, though, do they? If they did, you'd probably own them. You would own them. No, I think you would own them, too. You'd I'd be own like, them. I'll trade you a Gacy for a... <laughs> I'll trade you a Gacy for a Zodiac. Yeah. Here's his statement to the police. Quote, When I entered the room, this man was within two feet of the door on his knees and elbows, holding his head in his hands. I noticed blood on his head. I then turned the light on. I looked around and saw blood on the walls, on the bed, and in the bathroom. This frightened me, and I immediately left the room and went downstairs." End quote. It seems like everyone kept checking in to be like, let's make sure nothing horrible is happening here. <laughs> oh, seems like it might be. We'll give it another hour. <laughs> and then an hour later, okay, yep. This murder's not ripe yet. <laughs> this is brutal. <laughs> It came true, so she was actually warranted in all these fears. This though, this would be like if you were eaten by a shark. Or a bear. Oh, I'm sorry. This would be like if you were eaten by a bear. I thought for a second we were talking about things that are actually scary. I made the mistake of thinking of the most apex predator 
and I forgot that you're afraid of one of the lesser predators. So yes. No, no. I'm going to let this slide because I know you're just trying to get a rise out of me and you truly do believe that the bear is the most dominant animal. I truly animal. believe that. Yeah, it's the most dominant all-terrain animal in the world. And yeah, there's no sure it it's is. It's a killing machine. Yeah, pop, pop that thing in the ocean, see yeah. how it does. Investigators explored the possibility of this being a white-collar crime syndicate intent on tanking Johnson & Johnson's stock. In fact, Tylenol's share of the non-prescription pain reliever market plummeted from 35% to 8% after the murders. Investigators also looked into every disgruntled employee who worked or had worked where the tainted Tylenol was made, stored, or sold. Do you think Advil was behind this? No, I don't think Advil was. Is this big Advil? No. <laughs> big a little over an hour later, her next transmission stated that she had climbed to 10,000 feet. This may have been uneconomical in terms of fuel usage. It's unclear why Earhart made this climb, but author Elgin Long, a veteran pilot, guesses it may have been to avoid clouds or mountains. You think she just went vert? Just like... <laughs> I don't know. What do you think of this, Noonan? The Axeman eerily never used his own tools. He only used what he could find on hand in the victim's households, usually an axe, which he typically left behind at the scene of the crime. Everybody had an axe back in the day, huh? Yeah, you know, my biggest takeaway from this case is why not just throw, throw your, your axe, axe away? away? Yeah, it's literally the first thing I would do. But these people were like, leave the axe Hope in the shed. Hope he doesn't take my axe. <laughs> I know. I've got my porch axe, my shed axe, my kitchen axe. <laughs> Wagner must... I mean, does that have man have a magical penis or something? She, they got divorced and then she... You think the only reason someone would go back to someone is because they have a magical penis? I mean, I feel like divorce is probably a lot of work. Do you not know how love works? Maybe I don't. Unlike the rest of his family, 25-year-old Mitchell Trump brought his cell phone. Mitchell! You traitor. <laughs> you are a traitor to the Trump clan. It seems he didn't want to disconnect. Or he was thinking, uh, maybe one of us needs to keep or our he sanity was thinking, here. My family's insane. <laughs> exactly. We always refer to the Wild West as, you know, just being this crazy time of crime. You could actually get away with a lot of shit in a- the Wild West was the 80s. A couple, yeah, essentially, you could, it's a couple decades ago. You could get away with a bunch of shit. Walk into a store, pocket a cola. You could pocket a cola, punch the guy in the face, yeah, and, be and like, then be like, see you later. My name's Shane Madej, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Cops wouldn't get to your door for weeks. You stand a 99% chance of killing your daughter if you try to outsmart us. Follow our instructions, and you stand a 100% chance of getting her back. Fucking mathematician over here. <laughs> I know, this guy is a smug piece I've of crunched shit. the numbers. <laughs> I've run the permutations through my little computer, and all of them say, you're fucked. My murder laptop. <laughs> <laughs> so he also killed somebody right after the assassination. At that point, though, you know. I mean, you kill the president, everything yeah. else is below that. Yeah. It's like when you eat a big meal and then <laughs> have a little snack afterward. Yeah, like if you go eat Chipotle for lunch, might as well have a muffin after. Because might as well have a muffin. Right? You're already doing damage to your body, might as well finish the job. Do you think he uttered the phrase... Might as well. <laughs> as he did it. There was so much blood everywhere, and there was such force within the murders themselves. There was blood splattered on the ceilings, the walls. So whoever did this had to be covered in blood. Yeah. Maybe he went down that way, but it looks like... That's the forest. You can't no one's gonna, if it, You see someone running through the forest covered in blood, you're not going to bat an eye. You'll probably just be like, oh, <laughs> as you were. That's not how the forest works. You see someone in the forest covered in blood, you're going to be like, excuse me, sir. Why are you covered well, I'm not going to stop him, but maybe I'll like take a good look at what he looks like. I'll call just the let police, him, that sort of thing. I'll just let them mind their own. He said he was within two feet of the door on his knees and his elbows, holding his head in his hands. Like... No, like, not like that. He's not taking glamour shots. <laughs> nice of you to come in. I'm dying. Just blood? <laughs> Open and shut. I don't get this. It, it's all there. Is this going to be your Occam's Razor thing that you always cite? I think perhaps they slammed into the ocean and sank to the bottom of the sea. They're going to comb that ocean, baby. And when they do... No one can comb the ocean. They're you gonna, can't drag the ocean. They're going to comb the shit out of it. No, the ocean, no. Roughly a month later, on August 5th, 1918, in an undisclosed home location, Mrs. Ed Schneider was found by her husband in the afternoon at their home. Mrs. Schneider was still alive and rushed to Charity Hospital and would reportedly survive the attack. Upon investigation, it was discovered that their axe was missing from their shed. Mrs. Schneider was also pregnant, and I'm happy to report that in the week following the attack, 
she successfully gave birth. Good for her. Yeah, that's that's a, something. That's a super mom right there. She, Is that the only axe baby out of this whole story? I think. I think that. Can you thing. imagine being an axe baby? I don't. I don't know if that's a thing. I'd go around telling everybody, one of one. Oh, my mom took a... One of a kind, baby. Axe baby. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of his connections to the case seem circ uh, circumstantial. Uh, I mean, there's how-to crime manuals in his house, there's chemistry there. I it, mean, it just said how-to crime? No, like, I don't think it was titled how-to crime. Oh. There were manuals of how-to. If he had a book called how-to crime. How-to crime. <laughs> then there, there's your guy. Yeah, it was written in crayon. I'm... Pretty sure that there was a cover up by the police department. Police in the 70s, like 70s and 80s police were always just like, oh, you murdered someone? You got 40 bucks? I think that this guy may have jumped to conclusions a little bit and maybe, just maybe, should have not thrown out the fucking bones. He threw out the bones? I just said that. He said, it ain't them, trash them. <laughs> That's him. Ah, these bones, these, bo nah, these bones don't belong to anybody. Put them back in the ocean. Yeah, it, this guy wanted to go home early that day. I think. Just throwing the bones out. If the magic bullet theory isn't true, then there had to be two shooters. Do you follow that? Yeah. Makes sense, right? Yeah, so I'm just gonna guess it's a single bullet then. I mean, now let me disprove the single bullet theory. Okay, I'll let you do that. <laughs> okay. The police were able to determine that the box was shipped to Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. This all makes sense. <laughs> what do you have against Pennsylvania? I don't know, it's quiet up there. People got too much free time. You know what happens next. What do they even do? What's Pennsylvania known for? What, what Putting are... boys in boxes. <laughs> I don't think that's, I wouldn't say that Pennsylvanians are, have a proclivity for I boxes. I think if you look boys. at their state flag, you'll see so. a boy in a box. False. No, don't, okay, you know what? Yeah. There it is. I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but. I've connected them. If your parents told you at age 25 to throw your phone out the window, would you do it? No. He did it. This is what happens when you live on a farm. Kaczynski's bombs were partially made of wood, and he often used return addresses and pseudonyms involving types of wood in the past. One example was Frederick Benjamin Isaac Wood, with an address of 549 Wood Street in Woodlake, California. Not super creative. Yeah. I'll tell you why this is this is all relevant. Why I'm talking about wood so much. I'm about to spill that. Oh, let's spill. I'm about to drop a bomb right now. Drop that bomb. Oh, I see. Get You're on brand here with the bombing. What? Bomb. Unibomber. No, I, I didn't even No, know it was that. very good. Yeah. Okay, sure. I'll take it. This is relevant because two of the three founders of Johnson & Johnson have the middle name Wood. Oh. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> no, it's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, a bit of a reach. Wood had become infatuated with walk-in during filming, and Wagner had even flown out to where they were filming to make sure he wasn't going to, quote, make a fool of himself over this, end quote. This is, this is rough. To be fair, can you blame her? I, here's, I'm actually a little curious about that. I have a hard time imagining someone going gaga over walk-in. You go go go. You go 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 over walk. I go go go. You go 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 go. You know he's probably magnetic. I bet when you get in a room with him, he commands the the space. Yeah, no one's like, oh, Chris Walken's here. Everyone's like, you see who just fucking walked in? Chris Walken. What a walking. Boys, the party's here. I brought some cocktail weenies. I feel like the majority of these true crime cases that you do are plagued with people who don't want to do their jobs, and they're not thorough. Yeah, half the reason half of these cases are unsolved is because people got evidence and were like, too much work, burn it. <laughs> There's even supposedly footage of the JFK assassination from an angle different than the Zapruder film. This alternate footage reportedly shows a now infamous grassy knoll in the background. People who have seen the footage claim to see anything from puffs of gun smoke or a second shooter located on the grassy knoll. However, this footage has supposedly gone missing. I know people want to figure this out and that people wanted justice, but I, it just seems like a lot of work. Have I not made great points here though? Yeah, you have, but it's like, I don't know, it's not gonna bring him back to life. It's yeah. not gonna put his head back together. Well, wouldn't you like to know what happened? Do you really want to go on the rest of your life thinking it was a, the sole actions of a madman and not a, a larger part of a conspiracy or a bigger thing? I'm content with that, I guess. Well, you know, here's the thing. If it was a conspiracy, if it was a, a secretive group operating, they did a great job. I commend them. <laughs> no, this isn't. Hey, you fooled us. <laughs> Let's move on, you know? I'm trying to think of how I'm going to phrase this where I don't sound like a psychopath. Good luck. 
Owen was discovered with extensive injuries. He had been tied up with a cord around his neck, wrists, and ankles. It appeared he had been tortured. Blood had even gotten on the wall and ceiling above the bed. I'm a little tired of people being so aghast that blood is on the walls and the ceilings. Of course blood's gonna get everywhere. A person is beating the shit out of someone and stabbing just, them. It's also, I mean, come on, it's a, it's a visceral thing to imagine that someone's getting beat so heavily that blood is splattering everywhere like a Tarantino flick. Well, yeah, well, that's what happens. If you put your finger in a cup of blood and just went, <laughs> okay, wait a There's second. blood on the scene. <laughs> wait, what? Another propitious clue was a hat found 15 feet near the box. A blue corduroy, Ivy League style cap, size 7 and 1 8. It was labeled Eagle Hat and Cap Company and made by the small company owner, Mrs. Hannah Robbins in South Philadelphia. Dump a hat, dump a boy. People dump things in lots. Yeah. There's a boy in a box in a lot. Also, not always intentionally. You lose a hat in a lot. Oh, I'm pretty sure the boy in the box was dumped there intentionally. It's probably intentional. No one's like dragging a boy in the box and then like, as they get home, they're like, I'm forgetting something. Janet, we left the, <laughs> we left the box. <laughs> Our boy was in that box. When the young man pulled the car over, the car tailgating them would also stop. They claimed that eventually, Mr. Trump got out of the car and ran towards them, but he stopped in the middle of the road and stared at them. He then walked into Wangaratta's Marawa Park and disappeared. That's fucking terrifying. How scary is it you just lock your door? You're in a car, drive away. That's not that scary. And then, you know, if, if the doors don't work and he starts breaking a window, then guess what? Time to die. <laughs> Okay, and that's, that's a bummer. That's... But see, at that point, it's like, I'm dead. I guess I don't have anything else to worry about. So at, at what point does the fear come in for you? About when the life is draining out of my body. So... <laughs> also, here's a direct quote from the committee's findings. Quote, the committee believes on the basis of the evidence available to it that President John F. Kennedy was probably assassinated as a result of a conspiracy. The committee is unable to identify the other gunmen or the extent of the conspiracy, end quote. That's the government concluding that, not me. Yeah, again, I'm good with that. <laughs> you seem just so, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know what. I just, I, you know, I trust whatever anybody says about it. If the CIA is withholding information that they don't want us to know, great. That's, you know? that's a major bomb just being dropped right there and you seem indifferent to it. How is that not like, holy shit, how are the gears not turning in your brain now going, what else are they withholding? Like. JFK made a ton of enemies. That guy was shady as hell. Walken and Wood went ashore that afternoon to begin drinking at Doug's Harbor Reef, where they were later joined by Wagner and Davern. The party's waitress recalls that at dinner, they consumed two bottles of wine, two bottles of champagne, and one of the men was also drinking daiquiris. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Holy shit. The 80s are great. Yeah, just going to town. I'd like to imagine it was Walken, but. Just throwing back the daiquiris? <laughs> He seems like a daiquiri guy, I don't know. Five daiquiris. <laughs> the two girls allegedly saw the attacker and described him as, quote, dark, tall, heavy set, wearing a dark suit and a black slouch hat, end quote. Joseph Romano would die two days later. This guy sounds like the villain from Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah, he does, what's a slouch hat? I think it's, um, I don't know. I was about to talk out of my ass there. Are you gonna Google that? I'm gonna look up a slouch hat because that sounds like something I need. At one point, he and his wife were having marital problems, and they came to my office when I was sheriff and wanted me to counsel them, end quote. Was he like a relationship counselor? No, he was just a sh It's a small town. I can't imagine there was a, a, a practicing psychiatrist in the area. It just seems like a weird decision if you're having marital troubles. Well, you... let's, let's take this to the police. <laughs> I guess. Maybe they'll help us. Mend us, Sheriff. The International Group for Historic Aircraft Recovery, aka TIGAR, used Hoodless' original measurements of the bones and today's updated databases to determine the bones could have also belonged to a taller than average woman of European descent. And Earhart was said to be five foot seven or five foot eight. That's like a foot taller than you. <sighs> I knew you were gonna say that. I'm five ten, by the way, so. No, there's no quotes there. Well, when you wear your special shoes, yes, no, you're No, 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 that's from the doctor. Yes, your shoes are from the doctor. No, <laughs> no they're not. Yeah, they I'm are. five foot 10, damn it. I feel like I've been in some big houses where mm -hmm. you could be one end, someone in the other end could be straight up murdering a human being and you wouldn't even know. Would you take that kind of a risk as a killer to do all these weird little things inside the house? Yes. 
Did they call it Axeman Fever or Axemania? Or did they call him Axie? Or were they like, everybody in town's got Axeman Fever as the terror continues to grip the community? This just in, throw away your axes. This just in, more skulls crushed. Whoa, -oh, <laughs> throw out your axes. I do sort of love the, the language here though. You tell me we're through. Great, what else do you want? I murdered people <laughs> for you. I know. Now what? Clearly she's the jerk in this one. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, so I'm the psycho because I murdered four oh, people. Oh, because I murdered four people. Ruined that perfectly good knife. Payne claimed to hear a woman yelling, quote, help me, someone please help me, end quote. Coming from the near stern of the Splendor and potentially from someone in a dinghy. He also believed to hear a man who sounded very drunk respond, quote, okay, honey, we'll get you, end quote but his tone was so mocking, he claims this is why he believed the cries were associated with the party. Mocking tone, when you say mocking tone, you mean like, okay, honey, we'll go get you. We'll help you, like intimidating, <laughs> scary, spooky. Well, you, you went a little darker with it. Maybe that's what he said, or maybe he was just joking around like, oh, we'll go get you. Or maybe this didn't happen at all. Maybe this guy didn't hear what he thought he heard. Yeah, is he just like parked next to them? Is it like binoculars, like a creep? <laughs> a star watcher. Oh, what's going on there? woods up on that boat. Oh, she's screaming. Better, <laughs> oh, better take a note about that. <laughs> she claimed that LBJ had whispered into her ear, quote, after tomorrow, those Kennedys will never embarrass me again. That's no threat. That's a promise. End quote. Jesus. <laughs> I, like, that's compelling. Uh, I guess it's a character witness, so you don't really know. I get the vibe that LBJ, he was president, so obviously he's an intelligent man, but he also just seems like kind of an idiot. <laughs> Five days later, a New Orleans newspaper called the Times-Picayune received a letter from the apparent Axeman. Quote, Hell, March 13th, 1919. Esteemed mortal, they have never caught me and they never will. They have never seen me, for I am invisible, even as the ether which surrounds your earth. I am not a human being, but a spirit and a fell demon from hot as hell. I am what you Orleanians and your foolish police call the Axeman, end quote. This guy's a poet laureate. <laughs> I know. This is incredible. Is this Robert Frost? <laughs> Coconut crabs grow up to three feet long can break open coconuts with their pincers and are the largest anthropods living on land. These are majestic. They're kind of horrifying looking. Anytime you think something's a majestic, just imagine it if it was like 10 times bigger. Or if it was the last thing you saw before you died. The first theory comes from authors Lou Romano and Jim Hoffman, who came across a lead from a man in Philadelphia who said that his family once rented a place to a man who sold his son. Possibly the boy in the box. Who sold his son? Yeah, so he rented a place to this guy who sold his son. He sold his Which son? Which is weird because unless he was there to actually see the sale go down, that's not something you really tell somebody in passing. <laughs> no. Wow, the place is beautiful. I'm selling my son tomorrow. I'll take it. How much is it? How many bedrooms? We'll need one of them. Bucks. Can you believe it? How much is rent again? <laughs> What are, you, what are you on to here? Are you just holding the pen and saying, hmm? He didn't notice she was missing till he went to go kiss her goodnight. Yes. So that doesn't really line up with the whole screaming woman. It doesn't. Aspect. That's what I'm saying. You kind of don't really know who to believe here. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. It is very Old Testament. It's like most serial killers just like to stroke themselves and this is just... He was right. Maybe he was judged. like, ooh. <laughs> just, <laughs> see. Just, the devil, his satanic majesty. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That'll get him. Time to go murder again. <laughs> so this must be why he's not indicted. Because maybe they can't make it absolute that it is his handwriting indeed. What, the police were just writing fanfic? Yeah, what the fuck is this? On Saturday, September 3rd, five days after first leaving his home, Mark Tromp was found wandering down a road in Wangaratta around 5.50 p.m. He was promptly questioned by the police and given a mental health assessment. He spent five hours at the station before he was escorted out by a family member and gave the waiting media the finger. Though, Mark would later publicly apologize for, quote, the hurt and concern caused by these events, end quote. Rude of him to act like it's no big deal. Of course people want to know what the hell's going on with you. Oh yeah, excuse the public for wondering about your safety, sir. It does make me realize I don't give people the middle finger enough. <laughs> like if someone's like, hey, uh, you want to grab some salads for lunch today? Be like... It's meaner without the noise, oh, I think. So it's just kind of be like... 
<laughs> Is that better? Yeah, that's better. So right. What stock do you put into this admission from her or this acclaim by her? I'm curious. If I'm LBJ and I've got my illicit arm charm out for the evening with Tricky Dick next to me and old J. Edgar Hooves. <laughs> Tricky Dick. I'm not, I'm not going to whisper into her ear, hey, <laughs> Tricky the dick. president's going to die tomorrow. I can't get over you calling Richard Nixon Tricky Dick. That's what everybody called him. Is that what, was that it? Oh, uh, Tricky Dick. Tricky Dick. Yeah. One thing is certain, and that is some of those persons who do not jazz it on Tuesday night, if there be any, will get the axe. Jazz it. <laughs> Quote. You better jazz it. <laughs> he turned jazz into Honey, a Honey, we gotta jazz it. <laughs> Jazz it to I'm not going to throw out this axe, so we better jazz it. He had been hit repeatedly on the head, and his skull was fractured. He'd also been stabbed in the chest several times. His lung was punctured. There was bruising around his neck that could mean he was strangled. Remarkably, Owen was somehow still alive, though. One of the detectives to arrive on the scene would ask Owen about anyone else who had been inside the room. Owen responded, quote, Nobody. End quote. Although he was hardly capable of talking and not fully conscious. He explained, quote, I fell against the bathtub. End quote. Hell of a fall. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so in this scenario, he falls against the bathtub, rolls over into the bed, and then starts bouncing up and down so the blood splatter goes onto the ceiling and walls. Yeah. And probably bouncing on the bed so hard that he hits the ceiling a few times <laughs> and, and fractures, breaks all his bones. And fractures his skull. Yeah. You know, I bounced my head off the bathtub and I thought I'd go for a little bounce in the bed. Jesus Christ. And tied himself up somehow. <laughs> a warrant for his arrest was issued, and the ensuing manhunt would end on December 13th, after Lewis was spotted at a New York Public Library annex. So James Lewis, by the way, he's the guy whose fingerprints were found on this letter, who wrote this letter. And they spotted him at the library reading How to Crime. <laughs> yeah, that's how Adam Sandler made his career. Yeah, basically. Basically, by making fart noises yeah. and funny faces. Ooh, ta -ta <laughs> Ooh. He's a bit like Santa Claus. Okay, I'd like First to hear First of all, he how... says he's going to pass over New Orleans. That's a bit magical. Sure. Just imagine him flying through the skies with his big axe, riding a crocodile <laughs> or an alligator, whatever they got. Or a, a demon. Traveling on demon's wings, just looking down at all the little houses, listening for jazz. <laughs> it's like the good and the So he's like the Grinch, trying to listen to the Whoville people sing. Exactly right. Ryan, Ryan, I know everybody wanted to hear about this case, but I don't want to anymore. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Touching on the suspect, this guy's very suspicious. Yeah, Ryan, he is. And it's gonna get worse. Why? LBJ seems like a cool, cool guy. Well, you just said he seems like a dumbass. Yeah, he, he does, does, but he's like a bro. I guess if she's spent her whole life being afraid of water and she can't swim. Probably, probably put on a life vest Well, or why would she even attempt to or do even this? Or attempt. In her nightgown, no less. Yeah. In her nightgown, no less. That's why it's strange. I guess when I'm drunk, I, I attempt I've done to, some stupid things. I guess I would attempt to do things that I'm scared of, but Going back to my fear of bears, I would never go, hey, let me go pet this bear. No, I wouldn't. One of my greatest fears, I think I've said this before, is that someone will trick me into doing heroin. Which is the dumbest fear I've ever heard in my life. It, it would be against my will. How many situations could even put you up to that potential danger? Like, I don't know. All it takes how is... How many parties are you going to with heroin? Involved? None, but... It seems like could, a lot. It's not the fear that I'm at a party. It's a fear that someone would come up to me on the street and put heroin in me. And then I'm hooked forever. Boca did not regain his memory likely due to the blows to the head. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, that usually does it. Yeah. I once fell into a pile of bricks when I was a kid. What? And I don't remember much of it after that. What? Yeah, I was climbing because we were playing hide and seek. I was trying to hide and I thought I had the best hiding spot. Turns out I was wrong. The branch broke and I just- This fell. explains a lot. You fell into And after heart. that I could see ghosts. I don't think it gave you the vision. It gave me my eyes. I think it put a hole in your brain. <laughs> Let's get into the theories. The first theory is that the Tromps were poisoned by an environmental toxin on their farm, causing them to have bizarre delusions. But there doesn't seem to be anything else to back this theory up. Mold. That's all I got. Bristow went even as far as carrying a mask of the boy's face in his briefcase. Okay. <laughs> Let's think about some things here. The he, last two went a little off the edge. Yeah. Especially um, the latter. That doesn't even seem helpful. So would you wear it and go to people and be like, you, you do, do you know me? Do you see my little boy face? Does this look familiar to you? Rawr! You know what's even weirder? Even if he didn't open with that and he's like interrogating someone like, you seen this kid? No, no. All right, let me pull out one more thing. Clip, clip, clip. Now. 
now have you seen him? And they're just like, no, could you please leave can my home? please leave? <laughs> a teenager named Betty Clank claims that via her shortwave radio, she heard a female voice saying, quote, this is Amelia Earhart, help me, end quote. And also heard the female voice arguing with a disoriented male's voice. She also claimed to hear, quote, water's knee deep, let me out, end quote. Well. A little on the nose there. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess if your radio's malfunctioning, you want to get straight to the point. You're not going to say, the story is 1937, I land on an island. Let me spin you a yarn <laughs> that you'll, you shan't soon forget. You have one. I'm being eaten alive by crabs right now. <laughs> Let's get into the timeline. On May 23rd, 1918 at 4901 Magnolia Street, the first suspected Axeman attack occurred. Catherine and Joseph Maggio were struck violently by an ax, a straight razor used on their throats. Wait, he hit them with the ax and then cut their throats? I don't know. It also could have been his, since it was his first one, he was figuring out oh, if he, he was, was gonna be, he like was like, either things. I'll be the ax man or, or the, be the razor boy. Razor boy would be a good sidekick for him. Razor Boy does not sound. Axe Man and Razor Boy? Axe Man, I think, strikes a little bit more fear into my heart than Razor Boy. Lock your doors, Razor Boy's out tonight. <laughs> In 1975, John Connor was supposed to testify to a Senate committee about his role in a CIA assassination plot when he himself was assassinated. It makes you wonder if someone was trying to keep him quiet. But why even claim it then? Eh. Why would he even make that up? Do you think maybe he was just trying to up his cred, like in prison? Like, yeah, I, I whacked Kennedy. Yeah, this happens a lot. People always just claiming. Yeah, but I feel like if you're going to claim something, maybe claim you killed uh, some dude carrying groceries down the alleyway. Don't yeah, just no. claim I killed JFK. <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel like nothing good could come of that. Everyone just kind of rolls their eyes at him. How could I make my prison sentence a life sentence? Huh. I killed God. <laughs> Her husband's head was struck 18 times and died two hours later. Esther saw two figures in the bedroom, but could not identify them as they fled the scene. By the way, two figures. Razor Boy. <laughs> oh my god, no. He's back. No, we're not calling that. He's back from boarding school. <laughs> Personally, I love the island theory. I would love it to be true because I like, I like the peril of it. I, I like think the you drama. just like her getting eaten by crabs. I love the thought of someone getting eaten by crabs. <laughs> there it is. It, it's, it's pointless to point the finger at them, is what I'm, I'm, I'm saying. It, you, you could say it's anybody at that point, because it doesn't matter. You're making a baseless conclusion. You could say it's fucking Lime Cat or something. Lime Cat? You know, the cat that has a lime cut in half and he wears it as a helmet? He's the person who pulled the trigger. Or she. I don't know if Lime Cat's a Internet a photo? Yeah, yeah. Lime Cat killed JFK. That's what I'm saying. It's just as Do dumb. Do people call that Lime Cat? Yeah, it's Lime Cat. Is it a cantaloupe or something no, it's, on its it's head? it's a lime. It's a lime. I don't know. Is it lime cat? I'm pretty sure it's lime cat. I've, n I've never heard someone refer to this cat so casually. Another Axeman attack that is scrutinized is the second attack on Louis Bessemer and Anna Lowe. If you'll recall, Louis Bessemer was severely injured and his partner Anna Lowe was killed in that same attack. However, Bessemer was charged with the murder of Anna in bizarre fashion. Police found that Bessemer had written letters back and forth in Yiddish and Russian. They eventually came to the conclusion that Bessemer was part of a German spy ring or spy master for the Kaiser, and the attack had nothing to do with the Axeman. A spy's not gonna bash someone's head in with an axe. And then bash his own head in. Right. He's gonna, he's gonna lower a string from the ceiling and put a drop of poison on it and let that poison fall into a sleeping person's mouth. Right in there. Well, if they're, they're dead. sleeping, then why don't you just drop it into their mouth like a little droplet thing? Why I, don't, I don't know. That's what spies do. That's I've just what they do. This is the first time I've heard that. I think you just made Everybody it up. does that. I think you made it up. I did not make it up. Okay. It happens in a James Bond film. Which one? Um, the racist one. Where he's in Japan. <laughs> Robert Wagner also said in a 1986 biography, quote, It was only after I was told that she was dressed in a sleeping gown, heavy socks, and a parka that it dawned on me what had really occurred. Natalie obviously had trouble with that dinghy slamming up against the boat. It happened many, many times before, and I had always gone out and pulled the ropes tighter to keep the dinghy flush against the yacht. She probably skidded on one of the steps after untying the ropes. The steps are slick as ice because of the algae and seaweed that's always clinging to them. After slipping on the steps, she hit her head against the boat. I only hope she was unconscious when she hit the water." End quote. Maybe she did just slip. Mm, Wagner slip. sounds like he's putting forth a pretty solid theory. Anytime someone has a very hyper-detailed account of what would have happened that <laughs> makes them Here's what free to must go. have happened. Here's what must have These happened. These 40 things in succession. <laughs> exactly. 
this is just baffling to me. Yeah. It looks like they solved anything that was remotely possible of helping them solve the case. They're like, box it up. Yeah. Put it in the corner. Shove it in a closet. That requires some real coats work. over it. They have to put this thing to rest and probably, you know, mm. right the wrongs, bring people to justice. I guess that's technically their job. Yeah, that's what but they can get paid you imagine to do. how much goddamn paperwork is involved in that? <laughs> Holy shit. So much. You got to do your job, man. You got to do your job. 10% of your population was just murdered. Yeah. <laughs> There's two reasons why he would not give up his killer, right? Love, uh -huh. or maybe he was being entrapped somehow. Like maybe there was some kind of leverage against him. You think this was a lover's quarrel? It could have been. Oh. Why would he pay for his funeral if he killed him? Or like, and if it wasn't the killer who's paying for the funeral, why wouldn't that person just step forward and be like, yeah, that's fucking Jerry. Right. The plot thickens. It does indeed. This is a thick ass plot. This one's thick. Plot is thick as juicy. hell. Juicy. This is a juicy peach. Oh, it's a juicy peach, all right. <laughs> and I got juice running down my chin. <laughs> that being said, Lewis's past did lead investigators to suspect that he could be the Tylenol killer. He allegedly chased his mother with an ax when he was 19. Not great. <laughs> No, no, off to a okay. bad start. I've never done that. The second theory is that given the context of his bizarre letter, some believe the Axeman to be a supernatural figure that could slip through tiny entranceways and become the large man that witnesses describe the killer to be. No, 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 no. It's just a theory. That it, well, it's, it's dumb. <laughs> He shrunk down like a little mouse? Is that what you're saying? I, He's like Ant-Man? He's like... <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm big! Time to die! And what- <laughs> Police investigators also found broken glass in the Splendor's main salon, which Wagner attributed to the rough seas, a possible factor in why Wood may have fallen into the water. However, it's here that the testimony of Captain Davern defers. He claimed that Wagner grabbed and smashed a wine bottle after going into a jealous rage over Wood and Watkins interactions. He claims Wagner exclaimed, quote, Jesus Christ, what are you trying to do? Fuck my wife? End quote. So you could see <laughs> where the two accounts of what happened are drastically different. I just don't understand what the captain would have. Why would he make this up? True, unless he was, here's another turn, unless he was in love with Wood and jealous of Wagner. <sighs> see what I think? You can spin anything you want, how you want it. Damn it, Ryan. <laughs> What do you think Christopher Walken said when he said that? No! No! Uh, Bobby! Bobby! <laughs> Two mice! Two. The explicit use of the word umbrella unlocks one controversial wrinkle to this CIA theory. This wrinkle, which is popular in conspiracy circles, is that Lee Harvey Oswald acted with a potential CIA operative referred to as the Umbrella Man. Whoa! I, I love names like that. Oh, it's not just a name. It is very practical. The Umbrella There's Man. There's no creative input into this name. It's all practical. I fucking love that. Oh, man, I can't the wait The Umbrella that. Man. Oh, I love it, too. I can't wait to tell you. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, the Umbrella shit. Man. Don't call me baby, but yeah. Flowers were anonymously arranged with the Rock Flower Company, along with a card that said, quote, love forever, Luis, end quote, placed on Owen's grave. You know, I'm just gonna start sending flowers to people's funerals and say, love forever, Luis. <laughs> you should just say, love forever, Shane, in a picture of yourself, like that. But then people are gonna ask me questions like, why'd you do that? And I'd say, eh, it's a funny joke. It's and they'd bit. say, this is a funeral, you know. <laughs> Here's a question, the therapist. So you're a therapist, someone comes to you, oh, I got some troubles. Oh yeah, like what? Well, I murdered four people. Okay, well, I'll see you next week. Take a little drive, go to the police station. Hey, quick note, this guy said he murdered four people in your town. Police go, okay. You drive back to Reno, and then you he don't hear anything else about it. You're done? That's it? Can you imagine just, just going home to your wife and being like, hey, I've got an idea. It's a little weird. <laughs> and sh she just goes, well, I'm Sounds good. Yeah, I know. Like, these are two messed up weirdos Unless who have she... found each other, and it's almost a shockingly beautiful love story. This is dumb. <laughs> it's pretty dumb. Can you imagine if someone just accused you of being Amelia Earhart? You're her. I know you are. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm going to tell the world. Tracy said this of the experience, quote, you are reading and hearing a truly dark side of the human psyche. 
and having to pretend it's okay that I wasn't going to sit in judgment because otherwise the communication would have stopped. This is the worst experience of my life by far. It was horrible. End quote. Was he also pretending to be a weirdo? He had to have been, right? Was he like, yeah, man, I'm a journalist, but I'm a sicko, trust me. Trust me, I'm a sicko. <laughs> That's all he said over and over again. <laughs> That's For all... four years, trust me, I'm a sicko. Write me back. In addition to being Nicoletti's wife, Anna Marie was also Nicoletti's stepdaughter. So he married, wait, what are the, wait, hang on, what? <laughs> Your, your brain is imploding right now. I need like a visual here. So his wife- oh, When a man loves a woman. Answer. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. <laughs> but it's, it's, his, it's his wife. Yeah, it's not incest technically because it's not-, not Yeah, I, anytime you have to say, it's not incest technically. <laughs> that's not great, Ryan. On December 5th, 1921, Mumphrey visited Esther's home at 554 East 36th Street in Los Angeles. He demanded $500 and Esther's jewelry, threatening that he would, quote, kill her the same way he had killed her husband, end quote. But like a badass, Esther then killed him with a revolver. Whoa, good for her. We've had two badass ladies in the story. The girl who got whacked over the head, still gave birth and survived. And then this girl who got threatened and was like, oh, fuck that. Well, and you know what I'll do is I'll shoot you. It sounds like he's very accomplished and distinguished and probably knows what he's talking about. That photo looks like shit. <laughs> so I don't care what he thinks of it. <laughs> According to a sensational article published in the Newcastle Sun called Mystery Murder in Room 1046, that sequence of events went a little differently. The article states that a woman called the local paper to say, quote, you have a story in your paper that is wrong. Roland Owen will not be buried in a pauper's grave. Arrangements have been made for his funeral, end quote. I'm gonna start using it. A pauper's grave? Well, just a pauper's as sort of a descriptor. Like if I get a, if I get a subpar salad, Oh, you get, this is a popper salad. I will not eat this popper salad. Or if you get like a hotel room that just has a view of the parking lot or the freeway, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna sit in this popper's hotel room. Front desk, yes. I will not accept this popper's view. Upon investigation, the police found that Mumphrey led a blackmailing gang in New Orleans that preyed on Italians. And almost all of the Axeman's victims were Italians. This guy's a racist? Most of them were Italian grocers. Oh, fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is what made you turn? If there's already the basis that he's gonna be killing, I do not approve of that, but if he's gonna do it, then at least do it randomly. I, I think just, how about don't kill people? Look, Ryan, what are we here for? <laughs> I thought we were here to get into the mind of a serial killer. I know, I'm just saying, what if they all just happen to be Italian grocers? Oh, that's rich. It all just <laughs> happened to be, yeah, that'll okay, hold so up in court. Also in that moment, some believe that the umbrella man appears to lift his umbrella a foot or so. Both of these things in conjunction have led some to believe that the umbrella was a signal to another gunman, or that the umbrella itself was a spy-like weapon that could fire darts, perhaps explaining the slight hole in JFK's neck. He's like Oswald Cobblepot. Yeah, he's like he's like a uh, James Bond, and this is a new weapon that. Ends. He's like the he's like the penguin, or the penguin. The penguin had a gun a umbrella. <laughs> Davern also says that Wagner discouraged him from turning on the floodlights or starting up the engine in any attempt to search for her, saying that Wagner said he didn't want to alert the people nearby. <laughs> yeah, I would not want to be this captain. I gotta say though, after hearing this account, the one person who I didn't expect to just be very innocent, fucking Walken seems like he was just chilling. He was just, you know, he was just trying to fuck somebody's wife. <laughs> He's got just a bag full of mailboxes and beards. And, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He's a regular criminal carrot top. Yeah. He's got a whole little case full of things and like little intricacies. A little, a little horn. Honk, yeah. Honk. Horn, Elmer's glue, we're good to go. I just cut up an old man. Honk, honk. <laughs> However, if they were truly fearful for their lives, it's a bit strange that Mark and Jacoba Trump would allow their kids to leave the car, which in my opinion makes this theory unlikely. Did they mean to let them leave though, or did the kids bolt you would think that if your kids bolted you wouldn't be like mm, gotta press on well unless the kids ran like they stopped at a rest stop the kids ran and hid somewhere and then proceeded to run away then guess what are you gonna do then you're gonna go find your kids not if i'm trying to get off the grid well, off the grid they, no more kids they would be very selfish parents at that point in my in my opinion if you thought your family was in danger enough to take them away from the home why not go after them if you think you're truly being you know tracked 
Well, they don't seem like they make good decisions, Ryan. <laughs> Which brings us to our fourth and final theory, that Earhart may have made contact with alien life forms, either by accident or knowingly and in collusion with the US government. I don't even want to talk about it. Why? Because it's stupid. Dude, what in the world? Why is there so much just stuff dumped around here? Because it's a shanty it's a, town, it's Ryan. A ghost town, yeah, it makes sense. You hear that? Yeah, it's a car. Oh. Furthermore, there are pictures that show the umbrella closed before and after the assassination, but during the assassination, the umbrella was clearly open as Kennedy passed the umbrella man. The umbrella man strikes. So, yeah, I don't think you have to sell me anymore on this, Ryan. I was I was all in once yeah. you mentioned the words umbrella man. What do you think about the umbrella only being able to uh, to fire through the webbing of the Great. umbrella? Great, I'm on board. That's pretty fucking cool, right? Look, you could convince me any of anything in the world if you just use the words umbrella man <laughs> if you say amelia Earhart, her plane was attacked by an umbrella man and he took her to space i'd say that sounds about right anna marie told augustine that she did have a boy who passed away in bizarre fashion with morgue records supporting her statement his cause of death was electrocution from a nickel ride outside of a store once again leading to a dead end that's pretty funny <laughs> do you think she was like, hey, here's a nickel, Timmy. I'm gonna go inside and get some groceries. I'll be right back. Or the more horrifying version of that. Do you think she made him ride the ride and sat there and watched as he was apparently having too much fun and got really excited if and was like, like, yeah! And then- You think he screamed like R2-D2? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's kind of horrifying when you think about that sure one. Sure is. But there was a moment where she was probably like, wow, he's really enjoying that ride. Yeah, it's just one of those unfortunate deaths where obviously it's a tragedy, but boy oh boy, is that a laugh riot. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been fun to be a criminal in the 80s. Everything before the 80s, just lawless. Yeah. Was that morbid? Mm -hmm. You know all of this is morbid, that's right? True. Whatever. I'm sure human with butter would taste pretty good. Where are you going? I don't know. The man apparently explained that Owen had jilted a girl he was engaged to, and that in room 1046, Owen the man and the jilted girl had a quote, little meeting, end quote. Before hanging up, he said, quote, cheaters usually get what's coming to them, end quote. Shortly after, the Rock Floral Company received a call asking for, quote, 13 American Beauty Roses sent to Roland Owen's funeral, end quote. The voice added, quote, I'm doing this for my sister, end quote. These poor people at this funeral home <laughs> are just trying to d make a nice little occasion for this brutally murdered man. And, and they have th just this cartoonish cast of characters calling them up to deliver these grisly, grim messages. If I'm working at that home, I'm just, I'm getting fed up. You want to come do the job? You want to do my job? How about I be you and you be Show me? up. Why don't you bury them, asshole? <laughs> Stop just calling me, I'm busy. It's fucking annoying. You know how hard it is to reconstruct this man's skull? The supposed Umbrella Man wit also claimed that the umbrella blocked his view of Kennedy being assassinated, thus explaining his apparent state of calm, or shock as he described it, as he sat on the curb after the shooting. But some have claimed this isn't proven in the footage. Perhaps Louis Stephen Witt is in fact the Umbrella Man, and this is all a misunderstanding. Or, Perhaps Wit is a puppet for the CIA to cover its tracks. Nobody can say definitively which is true. <laughs> Fucking umbrella, man. Oh, I, I, I just can't believe that that's his excuse. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I heard the gunshots. I saw everyone running and I thought, oh, it must be part of the parade. It was a very nice parade. I didn't see the part where the president got shot in the head. <laughs> Natalie's sister said, quote, I can't imagine that he, being Wagner, purposely would have done anything to hurt Natalie. However, I know things happen when there is too much drinking and fighting, end quote. I'm surprised her sister defends Wagner. Does she though? She, she well, says- Well, the thing that she said is very interesting about how, you know, when everybody's drunk, I, I can't imagine ever murdering someone but even when you drink, you even, can't imagine murdering <laughs> no, someone. No, I'm saying even drunk. But I had, like, I ate a pumpkin once when I was drunk. I just took a bite out of a pumpkin. You're, you're a weird dude. 
<laughs> is that eating pumpkins, afraid of people sticking you with heroin needles. These That's a rational fear. I that bet. is not a rational fear. Yes, it is. No, it's not. What are we talking about, Natalie Wood? I don't know. These are the musings of a paranoid man. Leading a blackmailing gang in New Orleans that preys on Italians. What a strange thing to I've spearhead. never even heard of a blackmailing gang. What does gang? a blackmailing gang do? They do just get together and they're like, I saw this guy f fucking a goat. <laughs> what do you suppose is in here? I'm not looking in there. Want me to look in there? Wait. It's probably just... What is I it? Know. I don't know what the fuck that is. Okay. Maybe it's like an old part of the chimney. Looks like a Black Widow bike. I can't say who I think did it. Our legal team has informed me that I can't chime in on that, so... But I will now blink to you in Morse code who I think did it. You don't know Morse code. He doesn't know Morse code. Well, everyone who knows Morse code knows who I thought did it. So, so, so it's unsolved. unsolved. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we did nothing here once again. No, this was a this was the worst. Yeah, this was great. Thanks, Ryan. Same time next week. No. Okay. You. That's my chair. That's mine now. One way to treat people. <laughs>